Hey, hey, everybody. Let's see. I need to readjust that uh, so you can see me. Hey. Appreciate you being here. Part with me. My name's Dean Renfro, 5 Minute Leader Scopes. And uh, we conduct uh, daily scopes on uh, business uh, development and personal development. But, but I kind of want to take an opportunity to talk a little bit about the, the Oregon is, is, uh, situation and talk a little bit about some things we can learn from that that will help us as a person, as an individual. Uh, hey, hey, Nomad358, appreciate you being with us and glad to have you. If you don't mind putting your name in there, folks, that would help me call you by name if necessary. Uh, and uh, everything, but glad to have you with us and being a part of this leader scope as we talk about leadership. But I think there's some things we can learn about ourselves and about business and, and about how to improve ourselves from some of the things that just happened uh, in the Oregon shooting and along with uh, some other tragedies that happened. Hey, from Puerto Rico, appreciate you being with us today, international audience <laughs> almost. Uh, so I uh, appreciate you being a part here. Uh, today. My name is Dean Renfro. I am a business coach and also a business person. I own two uh, businesses that I run here in Houston, Texas, and uh, we do uh, several different kind of things. I try to take all that and put it together in, in helping people run their own business and learn from that. But today I want to talk about some personal things because, you know, I've learned as a, as a person, as a business leader, uh, if you're not growing, your business is not going to grow. And so some of that is just, just your own development as a person. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that today in this whole concept of what can we learn from the Oregon Massacre. Uh, because there's some things personally I think that apply to us that we as Americans, we as people here in America, and, and, and part of what we believe as Americans is at stake in, in what we've uh, learned. So uh, I'm going to just give seven points and kind of talk a little bit about each one of those as we go along. I encourage you if you... I uh, want to invite your followers to do that or to retweet this. If you don't know how to do that, if you're on the Android, swipe up and share it and retweet it and post it to Facebook. Or if you're on an uh, iPhone or iPad, you swipe left to right and do the exact same thing. You can share it. So I encourage you to do that. You may be waiting a little bit to see if anything I'm going to say is any good. But uh, I understand that too. Uh, I've, been doing, uh, I've been doing scopes for quite a while. usually do some every day. So first point, first point that we can learn in the concept about uh, from from the Oregon massacre is it's easy it's easy 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 to get lost in the weeds okay now that's what they say in Florida you get lost in the weeds now we say something else in Texas but I'm not going to say that on here but but it's easy to get lost in the weeds because there's distractions everywhere you know there we get messages and scopes and news and text and calls all bombard us with all kind of information. Uh, that, that just gets overwhelming. You know, we don't want to do it. So it's easy to get what I call get lost in the weeds. You know, you just kind of become a number. You know, you're just another, whatever you want to call it. You're just a statistic. You're just a, you're just a pawn. And so it's easy to get lost in the weeds. And the, that's the first thing we learned from, from the Oregon situation is, is all of this just gets lost among all the other uh, rhetoric going on, all the other messages, all the other pieces of information, you know, that come along and come into our lives, uh, come through our phones, come through our eyeballs, come through our ears, uh, come through our hearts, come through our minds. It, 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 it's easy to just kind of get lost in the weeds and all this. It's like blue, what we call lose focus. Turn my phone off. Sorry about that. Uh, and, and it's just easy to get lost in all that. And, uh, and so I think one of the things, a remedy for us, is to realize that, that what we're doing right now on the face of this earth, is this is, life is not a dress rehearsal. We're not getting ready you know, to live life again here. You know? and so the reality is it's not, it, it's not a dress rehearsal. And what matters in, in all of this, it's not about all the things and the information that we know and, and our business and all those. It's not about all that. It's about the relationships that we have with people. That's what becomes critically important in all of this. And, for, and, and what we see in the massacre is that there were some people there that died in this, in, in this massacre uh, that had some deep relationships in a lot of different ways. Uh, and, and it tends to look like in all of this is that those people who don't have those kind of relationships are the kind of people that wind up in these kind of scenarios for people. So, so I just want to encourage you to, to, to realize, don't get lost in the weeds and all this information that comes at you about all kinds of things. The second thing it's, it, it, we learn from all of this, as we do normally in any kind of tragedy like this, is it's easy to focus on the bad and the negative. It's just easy, to, you know... We're, because it just seems to be that's what gets promoted all the time, is the bad and the negative. You know, people like to blame. 
We all are blamers. You know, say, hi, my name's, uh, I'll say it, hi, my name's Dean, and I'm a blamer. I like to blame this, and I like to blame that, and that over there, and that over there, because it's just not my fault. Well, folks, hey, this is part of the, the problem with, uh, with, with what's going on in our world, is everybody's becoming a blamer. And nobody wants to take responsibility. You know, we like to grandarize dr the dramatic, you know, and just make it bigger than life. And, and, and it's not that things, that that's not was important or bad or that there wasn't a problem there. There was. It was, it was bad. And no doubt about that. And it's depressing. Depressing to see humanity, another human being, stoop so low and be so much of a coward in this process. And then it's totally confusing to us to... to to, to think, how could somebody so devalue somebody else that they would just feel like they could go in and take a life just because they wanted to, or just because they believe something, or just because they, they think something that is supposed to be that important to them. That, that, that It's easy to, to blame other people and all of that, and to blame other things, right? I mean, it's, you know, first thing you know, they're blaming this, and they're blaming that, and they're throwing this out, and we should not do this, and we should not do that. They're blaming everything other than focusing in on the problem that's there. But that's, that happens in situations like this. It's easy to focus on the bad and the negative and how bad things are and, uh, and, and really how difficult things are. I mean, my dad, my dad's almost 85 years old. He's chosen to live in a nursing home out the rest of his life. Our mom died uh, this last year from Alzheimer's, so he, he's by himself. Yeah, professional complainers, exactly. You know, and, and, and so uh, we had this discussion yesterday. Uh, this is kind of what brought some of this on. I thought I needed to talk about it. He brought this discussion. He's 85. He gets out every once in a while with his friends. He goes to church. This church picks him up on Sunday. He goes to church. Uh, uh, his friends pick him up every once in a while, once a week, and take him out to eat. He goes to Walmart every so often, you know. And he was telling me yesterday, he said, you know, son, I'm, I'm getting afraid to even leave the nursing home. And he said, I'm not too sure about it. That somebody, some crazy person just may decide to shoot somebody. He said, it's just getting really bad out there, son. See, it's easy. What happens in this thing when it gets so drunk, uh, 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 escalated in its drama of things, and not say there's not bad, but it's easy to get focused on the bad and the negative of things. And so what, what we have to realize is, is, is that we go through this, this process, it, 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 it's, it, it's not getting caught up in that, okay? Not getting caught up in that, and that, that everything's not about the right now. And it's in so many people, it's all about the right now. What's happening right now? What's, you know, it's all about me. It's all about now. And realizing there's a future beyond this. We should look beyond this uh, and, and realize that. So it, it, it's easy to get lost in the weeds, first one. Second one, it's easy to focus on the bad. That's what we learn out of this. It's just people focus on the bad and the negative and, and want to blame everybody. Uh, and then that, and people people get to thinking about that all the time, and then they, they it, it, it begins to it begins to close the walls in on them. Okay. The next thing it's easy to get misled with false information into believing something else. It's easy for that to happen. That's what we we see in all this. It's easy for false information to get you to believe in something else. You know, something else besides like life is sacred. See, when people believe life is sacred. Uh, the, the whole idea that I can just go in and take somebody else's life is it makes you think twice, okay? Makes you think twice, and, and in this case, it didn't. Life's not sacred, you know. We we got another thing going on in our country that's been going on for quite some time that has to do with life not sacred, okay? And, and what happens in that is it's it's okay, it's wrong to it's wrong to kill a, a dog, a non-human person, but it's okay to kill a person in the name of whatever, you know. That that somehow or another is okay. Because what happens is false information believe, gets you to believe in, in something else. And when you don't believe life is sacred, folks, you, nothing matters. I, I will do that, by the way. Thank you, Biz Long Queen. I appreciate that. Something else besides life is sacred. The second thing about that is, is in, in believing something else, is right is right. There's a right, folks, in this world. And we got people out here who they're decide, they want to decide what's right. It's right for me, but it's not right for you. So therefore, I'm going to put my right on you, and you've got to believe it. That's not, that's not how it works. But that's what people have been led to believe in things like that we see come out of this massacre. Then we find that out. How, how did somebody get to there? Well, they got, they got put information into them over and over again about some things that weren't right to start with. But, the, but, but you know, 
you got to be responsible for yourself and say, you know, I, I, I got to check out what I believe and what people tell me. I just can't take it like it is. But then they get to believe in something else besides that there's a standard of truth. There is a standard of truth in this world, folks. And, and, and it's not me. And it's not you. It's not our personal thinking. It's something bigger than all of us. And, and But people get to thinking, well, you know, I'll just believe what I want to believe. And if you don't believe that, that's your problem. And if I don't like that, I might just eliminate you. That's what happens in this kind of thing. And, and it's sad that it happens in this kind of thing, okay? So people kind of get to believe in all kind of besides something else, okay? Besides something else. But you see, the, there's, there's a concept that people miss off, often in this. Is that what you believe should free you, not enslave you. What you believe should free you, not enslave you. Because see, there, there's a book out there that talks about this whole idea. Matter of fact, it even uses the statement, and if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. But see, too many people are running around believing stuff that enslave them to something to a certain way that thing has to be, a certain concept that has to happen, a certain action I have to take, or otherwise I can't be free. And, it ha and it's happened over and over and over and over, and, and that's what we see comes out of the things like the Oregon Massacre, is that, is that people get enslaved to something instead of getting set free. Instead of getting set free. Now the fourth thing is, is, that we see out of this concept that happens to us is, is that we're easily lulled into tolerating the horrors of evil. We, we get lulled into it. It's kind of like, well, you know, and, and, and you know, this whole tolerance thing becomes a, you got to be tolerant. You got to be tolerant. We well, get folks, tolerance has a price. There's a price to pay to be tolerant. Okay? And, and people don't, don't realize that. They think it's free. Well, it's just, hey, you just need to be tolerant. But there's a, there's a price to tolerance. There's a boundary to tolerance. Tolerant, tolerance has to have boundaries. But we live in a world that can't think for themselves. we got a bunch of people running around that can't think. I mean, you know, we've dumbed everything down to the lowest common denominator, and nobody can think for themselves. So therefore, well, i just got to accept it, and I need just to be tolerant of you, and I need to be tolerant of what you believe and, and what you're going to do, and uh, even if it's taking a gun and killing somebody or making a bomb, I just have to be tolerant of that. You know, that that's your right. Uh, that, that That's your right. So... The reality of that is, is, folks, is there's a dark side to tolerance. People don't realize there's a dark side to tolerance. Now, there are certain things we can tolerate, quote unquote. You know, we live in a, a America. Those of you that live in America that are on this scope know that, that part of our Constitution allows for a boundary of tolerance. Okay, But most of that tolerance had not to do with evil, but of good, of how to tolerate good inside of good, okay, the boundaries of good. Just like we have a, we have a uh, constitution that talks about the very fact that, that the government shall make no law that restricts religion. Well, they did it, they do it anyway. And then they want to tell us we have to be tolerant of religious practices that are outside the boundary of that, okay? But they want us to, you know, you need to be tolerant of these people. Oh, you know, you need to be tolerant of this and this and this. It has nothing to do with what tolerance is about. But if we oppose it, we're not being tolerant. And so the reality is that tolerance has a dark side. That same book that I talked about earlier also has another statement about this very thing. That book talks about the fact that we better be careful when people call evil good and good evil. You better be careful. When you know people are taking things that are evil and calling it it's a good thing, or it's an okay thing, or you should just tolerate that thing, when you do that, you find out real quick, folks, that's a bad situation because there's no end to it. There's no end to it. And so uh, just remember that. that. That's what we can learn out of this concept of what's happened in, in the Oregon Massacre or in the Carolina Massacre or in the Com Columbine Massacre or any other massacre. Yeah, it's con people start compromising in the name of tolerance, in the name of acceptance, in the name of, uh, uh, well, I ha you know, it, uh, freedom. And uh, freedom has boundaries. Freedom has boundaries. And, 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 and people have to get a grip with that. Alright, the next one is, 
uh, that we learn out of this is it's easy, 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 easy. What this tells us is it's easy for people to shirk personal responsibility and blame other people. It's easy for us to shirk responsibility and blame other people. Everybody, as I said earlier, all of us are blamers. Hi, my name's Dean. I'm a blamer. I like to blame things. When things go wrong and don't go right for me, I want to blame something else. That's my first inclination. You know, uh, and, and, and we do that. Everybody wants to do that. But yes, freedom has boundaries and responsibilities. But what reality needs to happen for us is when we look in the mirror at the situations of life, it, we, instead of pointing out other people, we need to go, hey, that person right there I'm looking at, that's the person responsible. See, most people have been misled in believing that, that, that they are a victim of circumstances. That all this stuff has happened along the way and somehow you poor pitiful self wound up here and it's everybody else's fault. Look, folks, you need to come to grips with reality. You, where you are right now, wherever that is, Rich, poor, bond, free, wherever you are in life, you are there because of a series of choices you made. Okay? A series of choices you made. Nobody else made them for you. You can say, oh, well, this... No. You, you know, you made those choices. You, you came into this world. You didn't have any choice in that. That's about the only choice you didn't have is that, that you got here. But after that, you made a series of choices. And you are a collection of those choices. Quit pointing at everybody else and saying it's their fault, they're, they're the problem, not me, and stand up and say, that person right there that I'm looking at in the mirror, I am responsible for me and nobody else. And I need to take responsibility for myself. So if I've got problems, they're my problems. They're not your problems. They're my problems. If, I, if I'm in a situation, it's my problem, not somebody else's problem. Yes, other things happen to us. Things outside our control happen to us, but how we choose to deal with them, that's us. That's on us. Okay? And so that's what we see in this. Everybody wants to blame other stuff and other people and other things instead of saying, no, that person is responsible. You see, there's, there's always heroes in these kind of situations. There's always heroes in these kind of situations. And, and you know who the heroes are? It's the people who rise up and take responsibility and do something. You see, the, the first hero in the Oregon Massacre was that second person, besides the first person, who you know asked if they were a Christian and then got shot. The, the second person was a second hero, a really big hero, who, knowing that they just got shot for being a Christian, said, yes, I am one too, and got, and got killed. And then the, the, the other big hero in the, in the deal is the, is the bystander there that realizes, wait a minute, I'm not going to let this happen. Because life is sacred, I'm not going to let this happen to other people. And took action and got up and, and wound up shot seven times. See, those are heroes who say, this is my responsibility. Just like everybody, I am a human being I'm with all these other human beings, and I am responsible. I will take action. And so it's easy, one of the things we learn out of this, it's easy for people to shirk responsibility and blame everybody else. That's just, that, that's human nature, but reality is... It, it, what we should learn from that is, no, I have to be responsible for me. That's my job, to be responsible for me and not blame everybody else. The next one is, in this kind of situation with uh, things like uh, Oregon and Carolina and, and Columbine and Fort Hood and all these places where these massacres have her, uh, occurred, it's very easy for us to feel overwhelmed, powerless, and hopeless. I mean, it just is. I mean, my dad's conversation that I shared earlier is a reminder of that here's an 85 year old guy who ought to just be able to live out his house, live out his life. And if he wants to go to Walmart, go to Walmart. If he wants to go down to the local place to eat, a, you know, eat fish and chips or a hamburger or barbecue or whatever he wants to go eat. And if he wants to get in the van and go to church, he ought to be able to do that without real thinking. You know, i got to think about, am I going to die today because some crazy person, some person who doesn't want to be responsible, some person that wants to blame everybody else, some person that wants everybody to be tolerant but him, decides to take my life or the people, the life of the people around me? See, that, that, that starts closing the walls in on people. And you, you get to feeling hopeless and powerless about all of this. And so these senseless acts cause that. This illogical action that causes us to question humanity from the very core of saying, who in the world would do that kind of thing? You know, what's wrong with these people? 
uh, you know, and, and when we look at that, and, and the question we have to turn around and say, what's wrong with me for, not, for tolerating that? What's wrong with me for, for putting up with that? What's wrong for me for letting that happen? Now, I will tell you this about that whole situation, which obviously some people there had already made some decisions in their life that maybe you need to make right now for yourself. You see, the time to make a decision for what you value and what you will die for is not when there's a gun to your head. The time to make that decision is right now. See, very few, most people's list of what they die for is about that long. Now, people talk big talk. I've been around big talking people, oh, I, this is important, I'd die for this, I'd, you know, until you put a gun to their head. And then suddenly that list gets real short. Real, real short. Okay. So reality is, is that, that you need to decide now what you're going to die for. Okay. You need to decide now. Now, how do you get past that? How do you get past this feeling of hopelessness and, and powerlessness? Is, is that you have to realize that, that, the, that the prize for people are, goes to the people who hang on. The prize goes to people who last through it all. The prize goes to people who look be, who look beyond. The prize doesn't go to the coward. The prize doesn't go to the person who bails. The prize goes to the person who who perseveres and holds on. You see, because it's not about just now in life. There's there's a beyond here that you have to think about. And the prize goes to the people that hold on beyond, who go beyond the fear, who go beyond the powerless, who go beyond the overwhelming being overwhelmed. That's who the prize goes to. And so we have to remember that. Well, the next thing you have to realize, and, and kind of the last thing is, it's easy to place value. It's easy, what we learn in this, it's easy to place value on insignificant things and ideolo ideologies that, that don't mean anything to people beyond just themselves. Okay, See, you and I, when you and I are called on in life, to choose between things and people, I want to tell you something. Choose people. Choose people. But we're called on all the time to choose between things and people. We're called on all, all the time to choose between an, between an idea and people. I'm telling you, choose people. Choose people. When you, are, when you and I are called on to choose between life and death, choose life. See, that, that's what we're talking about here. That's what we're talking about being responsible in this whole thing. It's easy folks to place value on something insignificant, some insignificant thing. People give their lives to, for stuff all the time that don't matter. People give their lives to ideas that don't matter. Because you see in the end, when, when, we, when we boil down to it, there's not but one precious thing on the face of this earth. And that's people. You might be saying, well, how do you, why, why would you say that, sir? Why would you, why would you say that? Well, I'm t I won't tell you why. It's because it's, it's people in this earth, on this earth, that make a difference. It's not things. Now, things can be used by people to make a difference. But what makes the difference is people. What makes the difference is people. You see, it's people who God put on the face of this earth. It's people. Now, yeah, he put plants and animals and all things, but they hadn't made a difference. They hadn't made our world better. It's people. It's people. You might think your dog or your cat loves you, but they don't. They'll love the person down the street who starts feeding them just like they love you. But people love people. You know, you might love the fall and the leaves and turning, but they don't care about you. You might love the, the sound of a running brook. That's all fine and great, but it don't care about you. It's not going to love you back. The only thing that can love you back is other people. Is other people. See, God put us on here for other people. Matter of fact, God, people are so important that God would even come himself and die for us. That's right. He, he would say, I, you are so important, I would come die for you. You are so important that I would die for you and go into the grave for you and suffer for you, but I would rise again for you. God said he'd do that for you. You see, why? So that you could have life, life eternal. That's, that's, that's God's plan for you in your life. See, people matter. Matter of fact, he even said, I'll even do you one better from that. I'll come back and get you. I'll come back and take you out of this, this place and remake it brand new. That's what God said he'd do that. But, it, but you see, he said, I'm not coming back for the things. I'm not coming back for the gold or the silver. I'm not coming back for the fine things of life, for the ideologies of life. God said, I'm not coming back for that. I'm coming back for one thing. I'm coming back for you as a person. See, that's how much you matter. 
So if you've got to choose between all the things in life, choose life. If you've got to choose between all the things and people, choose people. If you've got to choose between all the ideas that are out here in the world, choose people. Because, see, that's the thing that matters. That's the thing that matters. So I think those seven things are real important things that we can learn from what happened in Oregon. Is, is, is that there's some things that really are easy to happen. But you and I as, a pe- as people, to rise up, and especially folks for us as Americans who have this opportunity, we cannot take this for granted. We must rise up and be people and be responsible people and be faithful people and be people who matter, who give ourselves to something that's bigger than the stuff of this world and the things of this world that we give ourselves for people just like us. Because, see, if we live long enough, and most of us have kids, or most of us have other people around us, is we got to pass this on. See, we're just one generation from this whole thing falling. This great experiment, as it was called by Thomas Jefferson, this great experiment is one generation from fading away. Because if we don't live it out and we don't pass it on, it doesn't happen next time around. There's too many other things there set to try to replace it. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to, to think about the things that could make it that can make a difference for you that come out of this experiment that's happened. This experiment that's happened here uh, in our world. I'll call it, we call it America. We call it democracy. We call it freedom. I want you to think about how, how can I implement that in my life to make a difference in the next generation and not let things like the Oregon massacre or the Carolina massacre or, or the Fort Hood massacre, or Columbine massacre, and move past all that and live life and live it free. Talk to you later. Dean Renfro, 5-Minute Leader Scopes. You can catch me on Periscope.tv at 5-Minute Leader. You can catch me on my Facebook page, 5-Minute Leader Scopes, and watch this scope again or share it with somebody and pass it on. And uh, and you can catch it on my website. It's uh, it's it's trending now. Dot biz. It's trending now. Dot biz. All of the all these scopes will be posted there as well. Thank you. Have a great day. Love to see you again. Bye bye.